As a kid, I think my parents cared a lot that I was doing a lot of different things, uh, as many parents do. And so, uh, I often, especially when I was playing cello and piano at the same time, struggled to find enough time to practice the piano. So, I guess if I had to describe my development um, over the last 10 years, it's a trajectory of sort of getting more and more sort of devoted to um, to the process of practice and uh, the sort of sometimes all-encompassing nature of it. Um, and sometimes that's meant making sacrifices uh, in other areas, um, uh, you know, in terms of things, other things that I wanted to do um, or socially. <laughs> um, but it's a completely worthwhile sacrifice. So. my childhood was pretty much relaxed and um, my parents were not strict and I really respect that uh, but their, the, the atmosphere in general in Korea was very competitive as I grew up and um, there was uh, much pressure that I had to bear uh, being in a music world. Mm, it was great in a way that I pushed myself to the limit, um, but also I think when you're pressed and when you have to, to bear the pressure, sometimes you you wonder why you're doing this, why um, music has to be this hard and um, tiring sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I I think but all of that was very nourishing to me and. Now I'm in a very different environment and I think it's more worthwhile because I have gone through those hardships. afraid of something uh, whether you know we're gonna make mistakes or you know, sometimes we have to give a speech before we play um, yeah, all these things uh, are what we're afraid of I guess uh, um, I prefer more and more uh, playing for a small group small group of audience yeah, as I said before, I I was more used to playing for um, a bigger audience in a big hall, um, but uh, I think there sometimes there it feels like there's a barrier between stage and audience. Um, um, of course, the, the the music will. Um, overcome the barrier I guess but I yeah the more I play for a smaller group of people I think uh, it's, it's more intimate I enjoy the intimate atmosphere um, and it really feels like there's a sincere communication going on and I yeah I feel like I'm getting feedback as I play and that's what um, 
think for now develops my um, abilities as a performer. Um, yeah, I think, uh, like Imo said, uh, nervousness is something that we all deal with and uh, often just sort of overthink and we um, think about it so much that, or try to address it so much that it sort of becomes something bigger than it might actually uh, need to be. But um, uh, I think that performance is like public speaking. If you're doing it on a regular basis, then you're um, going to feel a lot more comfortable with it. Uh, <clears throat> so, so that's, I mean, definitely a benefit of being able to, to perform um, regularly. Uh, and I think uh, very clearly the mo times that I'm most nervous are just when I haven't played in a couple of months for, for a large group of people. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what I would say about that. And um, what was the second part of the question? Uh, Smaller or large? Part. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't care what size the audience is as long as they're paying attention. <laughs> well, Jerry Seinfeld, you know, he's a very famous comedian. Yeah. And um, he has a, a joke where he says that um, they took a poll in the United States and the number one fear of, of people uh, is public speaking. Right. And the number two fear is death. Right, so right, right. the majority of the people in the United States would rather be <laughs> at a funeral, would rather be the guy in the coffin than the guy giving the eulogy. <laughs> so that's, you know, perfect. Yeah, I, I agree. Nobody likes public speaking, right. but you're going to be a public figure. You have to get used to it. Yeah. What, um, what do you like most about participating competitions? And what do you dislike most about participating competitions? And this includes the preparation aspect of it, not just like yeah, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think what I like about it is the fact you can really push yourself. You have a deadline, and uh, you have a clear goal that you want to win this competition. That really drives you and uh, makes you do your best. I think. And if, uh, if you win, you will get you know, really great opportunities and it will open the doorway for you to embark on your career. And yeah, what I don't like about it is that it's the pressure that engulfs you. Um, uh, I think the pressure gets really heightened while you're in the competition. We try. I at least try to <laughs> to be friends with all the other competitors and, and try to learn from them. But yeah, the I mean, it's still a competition. You you know you're being judged, and um, it's like you know, someone should win and the others you know, should not. Like there's only one winner. So yeah, the, the sheer pressure is really hard to deal with I guess and also you uh, if you go to um, more and more competitions you tend to stick to um, a repertoire that you're comfortable with you don't try enough to you, know, you don't take a risk basically um, I think if I if I can go back maybe cut down some competitions that I would really focus on expanding my repertoire. I think, yeah, that's a dislike that.
found the bananas. One's for you. Yeah. So Why do you not? eat bananas before every concert? <clears throat> not, not every concert. You just wanted a banana? Yeah. I mean the ones where there's someone to go to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, we met the page turn. Oh, good. Does she seem competent? Yeah, she, okay. she, she seems pretty professional. Oh. <laughs> she, she speaks Korean. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. There's usually the page turner. Yeah, that's true. Really? Yeah. But she's not here today. Okay, I have to go think about what I'm gonna say. You don't have it planned out? Not necessarily. <laughs> okay. Alright, don't bother them too much. Okay, good luck. <laughs> Alright. Mm -hmm. Besides composing sonatas, but Greed, Greed was inspired. So he composed this sonata and Although you hear that the cold and the sharpness of, of Norway, it's with a very positive and optimistic um, sort of spin. So that's the first half. We'll talk about the second half at the beginning of the second half. And I would like to ask all of you to please now, if you haven't already, turn off your cell phones. Um, so that's all for me. I'd like to thank you all again for coming. And please enjoy the first half, and I'll see you later.